Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Taco. I'm working on another reel that Scott acquired at a flea market, and Scott has found some beauties. This one is the original BG10 from Daiwa. This is the first of their black gold series. You can tell it's got the, the wooden knob on it, beautiful black and gold finish. This one does not appear to be finished, uh, fished very much. There is noise, and that noise can either be dried greases, which happens a lot on reels that are this old and not frequently serviced or maybe just left around for some time before somebody decides to sell them. Or it can be that, uh, well, it did get fished and the burrings kind of got worn down and that's what you're hearing. We're going to find out. We're going to take this reel apart. we will show you how to service it, how it was made, why it's a treasure. And, uh, well, if uh, you have one of these, you'll learn how to service it yourself. That's kind of the whole idea behind Second Chance. Before I go too much further, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you like the Art of Reel Repair, if you like to learn about fishing reels, and if you like to do it yourself, and uh, maybe even start your own business for servicing reels. So I'll kind of show you a kind of behind the scenes, look over my shoulder type of uh, video that uh, can teach you how to do that. Well, we're going to start by removing the exterior pieces and parts. Doesn't matter which parts you take off. What matters is that you have a process, not only for taking them off, but also for knowing what to do with the pieces and parts once you remove them. I just did a video the other day I'm almost embarrassed about but I had pieces of parts all over my table. Now, my mind was tracking it that day and I didn't get in trouble, but more times than not, if you're not keeping track of the sequence that you took the pieces and parts off and having a repository for them when they are removed, you're going to uh, find that you're missing one or you're out of sequence <coughs> or something else uh, went bump in the night. So I encourage you to do that. Take pictures with a, a camera. Uh, it doesn't matter which ones. Use a camera that's uh, in your cell phone, use a, a regular digital camera. Hey, take a video like I am for all that matters. This reel was made in Japan. <clears throat> I just got a question the other day about uh, Japan, Japanese versus Korean Daiwas. Which ones came first? Well, the ones that came first were the ones made in Japan. And interestingly enough, the very early ones were in partnership with Seiko, the watchmaker. A lot of the fishing reel manufacturers that have started, have started as <coughs> watchmakers, clock makers, jewelers. And Abu started making taxi meters. That's why you'll see the record or record. I'm not quite sure which ones pronounce that at, at any point, but uh, they, they move from making <coughs> taxi meters to making fishing meters. That one's a little stuck. We're going to use the flat bladed screwdriver to get that one loosed. If it becomes problematic, if it really is hard to turn, <coughs> excuse my getting caught up here for some reason, if it gets hard to turn, then put some penetrating oil on it and let it sit. Don't just try to wrench it out, you might break the, the screw. Now that's not particular on these cases, these cases are stainless steel screws, but a lot of times they're less expensive rusted in screws that you may break. When I take my side plate screws out, I like to put them on my table first. That enables me to make sure that they're all the same size. If they're not the same size, I want to mark where the shorter or the longer or the different threaded screw came from. That's the side plate screws. I might as well take the spool off at this point. Push down on the center button to remove the spool. Just going to set that off to the side. My system of organization is to put them in the parts trays. I use the bottom of a fast food container to uh, house those parts when they're removed. My uh, system for sequencing, well, that's my video. Um, uh, if I get stuck, I will go back and look at the video. We have a, uh, a metal case. There's an inner case washer. There's a bearing. And then there's a arm that's uh, holding the, the axle shaft in place that acts as a crosswind arm. And uh, this bearing might be one of those things that we're hearing kind of sticking. Oh, here we go, now it seems to be coming up and off. And the first thing I want to do with that bearing is get rid of that old grease. There's a lot of dirt and grease on this one. 
So I think what's happened is this is an open bearing. By open, I mean it's not uh, sealed or shielded. Shielded on the one side, open on the other. And this could be helping to make the noise. This is the sealed side, uh, the shielded side. And that's something you probably want to pay attention to when you go to reinstall. I'll show you the other side in a moment. It is different. And this one pretty much is a little bit of a dirt shield since you have the opening to the handle on the side. But if you look underneath now, you're going to see the ball bearings. Take a uh, uh, an awl or something. Move it. Make sure that your bearing is moving. This one... Uh, this one's a little stuck or stubborn, so that may be causing it. I'm just going to flush that with some penetrating oil. I'm going to hold the inner race and I'm going to turn it just to make sure that it's turning okay. Now let's loosen up. So that's a case where the oil has dried in its place. I'm not feeling any roughness and it is turning the way it should be turning now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that kind of seep out for a moment there. Then we'll re-oil it before we reinstall. Put that in my case. And I like to use a paper towel. You'll see that we've already accumulated a lot of stuff like dirt and debris on there. I like to use that to keep the, uh, the dirts off of my, my table. Next up, take a picture here. This one looks more like um, uh, a question mark, if you will. It's, it's not a direct side to side. This one looks like the number 9. That's not it. It's more like the letter G. And there's a little bit of old greases on there. So I'm just going to use some 4-0 steel wool. It's a polishing steel wool just to get that old grease off of there. Now that's on the exterior side of the swing arm, so it doesn't matter too much. This is the important side, that's the one that's going to be running against the main gear. But remember, this is the orientation to it. Easy enough to get that confused. Let's see if we can pull the main gear out. Probably can't. There's a, uh, a set screw in the cross line block below here that we're going to remove. And once we remove that screw, it's a small one. Again, a good place to take a picture. Hold your cross wind block now and pull up on the axle shaft to remove that. That comes up through the top and now you have the cross wind block below. I'm going to remove both of those to clean that out. Now we should be able to remove the main gear. And I guess what's happening with this main gear is the thing that, that happened on the other side, the bearing, is kind of stuck there. So I'm just going to spray this. I'm going to let it sit for a minute. I'll turn off the camera and I'll come back. I just want to get a little bit of penetrating oil to help me get that bearing off the back side. While we are waiting for that penetrating oil to do its work, two things. Let's test to make sure that the bale is tripping. It is. And let's remove the rotor assembly then. I use a, a 10 millimeter ratchet to do that. And that comes off in a traditional counterclockwise manner. Once I break that, I like to remove it by my hand. Again, we'll find a nice corner for that uh, nut. We should be able to pull up on the rotor now. And we're going to, uh, to work on the balance of the inner workings of this reel in a moment. All right, let's work on the top of this assembly. I just uh, tried quickly on this. This is not coming loose, so we're going to go about it in another way. This is your anti-reverse ratchet. It's got a little eccentric spring on it that fits in the groove on the ring of the anti reverse dog. This gets pulled up to remove it. That's the uh, clip spring I'm talking about there. Underneath that we have a tie down cap and an anti reverse dog. And unfortunately because of the uh, bearing being stuck, I'm going to remove this whole assembly here. So we're going to start by removing that anti-reverse dog. Take the pictures so that you know the orientations of these pieces and parts that you're removing. I 
That's a stubborn one, and this is one of those ones I was talking about. You need to match the blade of your screwdriver to the slot of the screw, otherwise you risk damaging it. Screw is out. The anti-reverse dog is out. And the cover for that dog is out. Just going to lay them on the front here. Next up, we want to remove the collar for the pinion gear. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, if you leave those questions in the comments section, I will try to answer those for you. Okay, take the second screw out here, that'll remove the collar. And then make sure that the collar is symmetrical. In this case, it's not symmetrical. The one that's facing you as you're holding the reel is wider than the other side. And when you go to put it back on, it needs to go on that way. I'm going to just leave that on my table. Next up, we can remove the pinion gear and the bearing. Pull that up and out. That will disconnect that from the main gear. And one more chance here with this main gear. Nope, we're still stuck. Alright, so here's what we want to do then. We want to come down here and remove the arm. And then we're going to push up on the pin to remove the override system. That's going to give us the clearance we need to get the main gear out. And I know it probably seems simple. Somebody just avoid it. Slap some grease on it, whatever. That's not the way it should be done. And uh, that's not the way it's going to be done. You saw the pin pop up right away. If you didn't take a picture, you might not have noticed the tag end of this screw goes in this little hole right here. So if you're trying to reassemble this, uh, you would want to know that for sure. All right, I'll lay that down. Now we can bring this out. We can try to see what's going on with this bearing here. I got the bearing off. A lot of old grease inside. We're going to use a penetrating oil to loosen that piece. That's shellacked on there. So this has been a long time since this reel has been serviced. I'm actually using a flat end of a screwdriver to, to, to just kind of scrape it up. That's how old the grease is on the inside of this. So it may be that uh, the reel just hasn't been serviced in a while. It's just probably making the noises. The bearings don't seem warm, but they seem tight from old greases. So I think we should, once we lubricate those, we should be okay. I don't think they need to be replaced. But this is a result of the reel not being used in quite some time. Alright, we're going to do the same thing. We'll get rid of this now. Get a fresh tape of towel. I'm going to do that one more time here with the penetrating oil just to get some of the chunky stuff out of the way. That's better. I'm going to use a brush. I have a variety of hard brushes on my table. Just pull through the teeth. Let's get any lingering old greases out of there. Being careful not to knock those pieces and parts that I have laying up on the top off. Okay, that's the main gear. I'm going to test this one. This has got the same issue. It's got dried grease. So I'm going to again we'll spray. And I pinch it, just simply pinch it. And then I just work the outer race to make sure that it's running. That's what's been making the noise in this reel is these bearings. It'll be okay. 
Okay, I got that spinning again. I'm going to remember to put that right back into the case. It snapped in nicely. I'll just give that a nice bath of oil there and that'll help loosen that one up when we start spinning the reel. Next up then we have the bearing that's sitting on our pinion gear. We want to do the same thing there. We're learning on this. Now this one is shielded. The oil will seep through the shield. Let's spin it, make sure everything's done. Yeah, this one's running nicely. And we'll do the same thing here that we just did with the other gear. A little bath of the oil. Get the brush. This is a hard brush. It's not a metal one. You could use a toothbrush if you like. You should make sure that you clear the channels. And when you're clearing, clearing them, take the time, take a look and make sure that there's no damage to these. So if there's damage, it's going to run rough. I'm not using a small blade of a screwdriver. I don't even know where I get some of these tools. That's a, a hex drive, a screwdriver tip. Came off of a multi-tool somewhere. So, still can work. There you go. All right, clean that off. The gear goes on. I'm going to leave that gear proud a little bit. Take the fishing reel grease. Make sure we get a nice amount of grease onto the pinion gear since it hasn't had grease in a very long time. A little bit under where the race is going to ride, a little bit on the stud where it's going to go in, and now we can add that back to the case. Okay, now we have our tie down clip. Remember what we said, the, the one side is wider than the other, and the tie down clip went with the wide side facing you, or me. I may be able to use a screw starter on this, we're going to find out. It's just a very small screw. And I can. I use that screw starter to get the screw going in the hole. I never finish it with the screw starter. That's got a split blade on it. I try to over torque it. It does uh, bend ruin the tool from time to time. So I'm having a little bit more difficulty locking that screw in. Just take your time, be patient. Alright, we'll load that side in next. And I'm both started. We'll come back and just use a, a regular screwdriver to finish the task. And we can Next we want to put our main gear in. We're going to load that up with fishing reel grease before we reinstall that. Actually I can put the override in at this point I think. So this might just be knocking around. So let's go put that after we're done greasing. Put the override back in. Get that out of the way. Remember this couldn't come through because of the override being stuck. The override has a uh, bar on it. The spring is a hooked spring, so that's not falling out of that side. You want to get the hole. Oh, see, I got ahead of myself. You can't, and now I know why this side is wider on the one. You can't. Um, can't install the spring because the hole is under that little clip. I'm just going to move it out of the way and bring the override in. I'm going to line the spring hole up. And I just used my, my clipper or my pliers to get it into the hole. I'm going to push down and turn. This has got to turn to the left to seat properly just like that. And we can bring that little cover over and reinstall that screw to tie it down. I 
All right, the top end of that piece is done. Before I go any further there, I want to put the handle to the back side of this. Guess you have to hold the piece there. Bring that up. Find your screwdriver for that. Okay, that bar is back on now. Now on this side we want to reinstall the dog. And the little cap mechanism. This is your dog. The cap sits on top of it. Like that. And both of those go over the side here. Move that out of the way. Start your screw. Guess it's easier if you start your screw with the cap on it. side screwdriver. And tighten that down. That's got a collar on it. And you need to make sure that the collar clears the shoulder of the dog. Just work it until it does. And then turn your, your little device here, make sure it's moving in and out. Make sure that the dog is moving free and easy, in this case it is. And then back it off to install the click ratchet with that spring. That spring is going to go into the uh, part of the dog mechanism here that has that little acceptor. Just like that. So that's how we found this. Now, if you're turning your reel, you should be fine. And when you go to back it off, it'll pull it in. And that's how your anti reverse dog works. Grab our rotor now. A little drop of oil onto the release point trip mechanism. Bring that in from this side. is where having the parts tray and the organization of the pieces and parts helps. Start your rotor nut by hand. Tighten it down as much as you can. And you want to swing the orientation on the ratchet wrench. Tighten that down, spin it, make sure that it's spinning okay. It's doing fine. We've already tested the bale. I'm just going to throw a little bit of oil into each seam where the bale is going to ride. And now we can come back below now and uh, do the rest of that assembly. The first piece I want to put in, just because it generally is a little bit more difficult, is to uh, grab the crosswind block, put a little bit of grease into the channel where it's going to ride, loop it onto the foot, pick up something on that. Just a little bit on the foot. Then remember the orientation of it. It's going to sit in here like that. Now I'm going to take my main gear and put that in. And we've oiled that bearing. Doesn't hurt to put a little, little bit more oil in there. It's probably seeped in. We've greased our backside of our main gear and our pinion gear, so we can go ahead and put the main gear in now. And we can take our axle shaft, light coating of, a, of grease on that. This is where, if you didn't remember what side of the crosswind block goes, uh, that you would take a look at your pictures. 
it's easy to flip this one upside down. Find the flat side of your axle shaft, bring that through, bring that down, and merge that with your cross my block. You'll know you did it right when the hole in the axle shaft aligns with the hole in the cross line block. Then go back to your parts tray or your wherever you've kept your pieces and parts. Get the flat headed screw that belongs in that cross line block. And I know it's been a long time, and this is why you want to take the pictures and you want to not trust your memory. Especially things happen. You may get a phone call, you may have to walk away from a project for a little bit. Uh, those pictures and organization things will be invaluable in saving your project. Remember what we said, the letter G, not the number 9. You want to move your axle shaft up so that you can merge the point on the cross wind block and then you need to make sure that you are over the raised circle on the inner side of this. Well, we already have that case washer in there. All we need to do is put the bushing, uh, the bearing on. Again, we can put a little bit more oil onto that bearing. It's been a while, it's been dry. The bushing is inside the case. We put our case on. Make sure you get a nice snap like that where your case goes on easily and it is flush to the inner case and that there's no tension on it when you're trying to close this up. If you're feeling like you have to force something to get it to close properly, something inside the reel is not sitting properly and may become damaged if you continue to try and force it. So just take your time, make sure that it's all aligned and it has a nice neat and easy snap to it when it goes back into place. This one has a good reel to demonstrate that on. There's a lot of reels that have a lot of things that need to line up. Something like a uh, bait feeder reel, for example. It's got several different openings that all need to line up and a lot of springs inside and that. And if you try to force that case, you can break up the internal mechanism right at a minimum. And, uh, it'll just not operate properly. It'll feel very sluggish. Okay, that's the bottom three case screws. They were all the same size, we noted that, so they can go in any of the slots. We have our handle which screws in. And that's going to close this down. There's only one more thing to do, that's to look at the spool. That spool is, uh, well it's kind of the spool design of a uh, of the smaller reels. They don't have a lot of drag in them. Reminiscent of a Mitchell reel. To look at your spool washer, you want to hold the bottom post and turn the top adjuster knob. That should give you access to your drag washer. Your drag washer is a Teflon washer. I just uh, got a request. I had a, a pen reel come in. I think it might have been the 720, I'm not quite sure, it might have been a 4200, and it had one of these Teflon washers, and it just wasn't behaving properly, and there was really nothing you can do because, well, this one's got oil on it, but you don't oil them, you don't have to, they're self-lubricating, and uh, Penn has made a replacement, it's the HD100. All right, uh, let's put that back on, this is your tension, the uh, rings go to the outside down. We just tighten this back up. Grab your spool and install that. Push down and you will get a lock. And then make sure that you're tight with your drag. All right, that's holding. I always recommend backing these off a little bit just because, well, if you leave them there, it's going to compress it, it's going to wear, and you may lose it. Uh, prematurely. Alright, let's turn it. Well, there's still a little bit of a knick-knock going on there. It's quieter. It's certainly spinning nice and easily. This is a 1980s reel, so we're talking about a 40-year-old reel at this point. 
guess it's allowed to have a little bit of sound and noise to it. All right, that's it. That's the original Daiwa BG-10. That's a full take apart. We even took apart the anti-reverse override. Uh, but we got to the core of the issue there. And, uh, well, we've cleaned it up. We've inspected all the pieces and parts. We've reloaded, reassembled. This reel's ready to go fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed that. To everybody who's a first responder and essential personnel, thank you for everything this that you do to keep us safe. To all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.